Hey guys, Chris and Lindsay here with Call to Wander. Thanks for taking the time to check out this awesome tour video. We spent six months remodeling our 1999 Shasta Cheyenne Class C motorhome. Come on inside and I'll show you around. Before I start the tour, please make sure to subscribe to our channel. There you will find all of our videos that we just released on our remodel and it will show you how we did all the projects in this camper. So this is our living room, which is in the front part of the RV. I really wanted to go with a modern, yet rustic, yet kind of boho feel in here. So one of the first things that we did was we painted everything white. We painted the walls, we painted all the cabinets. Most of the cabinets in here are white. Um, on the cabinets, I used the Heirlooms Traditions paint which I loved. I think they turned out fantastic. And then also on the lower cabinets, we'll show you when we get to there, I did an accent color of teal. So you'll see the pop of that color in here. We also redid the floor. We took out all the carpet that was in here. It was ugly. It was dated. It was dusty. It was nasty. It all got ripped out and we put down vinyl plank flooring, which is waterproof. And it's kind of like a a woody light gray color and then all the other wood touches that we have here in the camper I stained to make it look rustic and kind of dark and I really 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 like that so up here in the cab over part of the camper if you have a class C you most likely either have a bed up here or you have an entertainment center we actually had both we have an entertainment center with a whole bunch of storage which is awesome we have our flat screen TV that we put up here and we can move it if we like. If we don't want to watch it up here, we can move it to the desk, which is great. This was a twin size bed and it would pull out. We actually turned it into a standing desk or a standing office. We keep all of our work stuff up here. We keep our laptops, all of our computer stuff, our hard drives, um, arts and craft type of things that I like to do. Uh, just general stuff like that that's work related and this was actually one full piece of wood Chris cut out a section so that we could stand here and work if we wanted to and so it's pretty awesome we really like it it pulls out nice and then when we want to go we just pull it in and lock it up so we have tons of storage up here in these cabinets you know, we painted everything white, and then we also changed out all the cabinet pools. They used to have um, ugly brass hardware. We bought these on Amazon. They were a good price. I really like them. I love the black and white. Also, if we want to close off the cab, I added this tension rod right here. And these curtains, when we're not using them, I tie them up. When we are using them, untie them, put them out. All they are is just a drop cloth that I bleached. And they're a little long, so I just folded them over, clipped them on these little ring hooks here. And these are great for to close off the cab if you don't want to see the cab. Um, it's also great for insulation. It's also great for privacy. Uh, we use these a lot like on short stays where we don't want to um, put up the outside. We have like an outside privacy curtain that goes around our windows. So for like a short stay, we won't put that up and we'll just put these down and it makes it so nobody can see in. Another thing I added to make it feel more homey in here I added these little macrame plant hangers. I keep most of my plants in them. I think they're really cute and they add a nice touch to the camper. So this is our living room and our hangout space. When we bought this camper, I knew I really, really, really wanted a couch. We had a truck camper before and all it had in it was this dinette and it was very cramped and I knew I did not want a dinette. I wanted a sofa that was comfy. So. And it came with that, but we didn't like it. Um, it just wasn't functional for us and it was ugly. So we ended up building our own couch. We used um, white pine and then I stained it with dark walnut stain just to make it look rustic. Besides the sofa uh, just being great to sit on, we also made it to where it pulls out into a bed. So if we ever have guests over, they do have a place to sleep. 
We also knew that we wanted to add bigger batteries um, when we were building this out and we wanted to put the batteries inside. We didn't want them outside because that's where the old battery used to be. So we had storage space under the couch on this side. Our, actually our furnace is on this side. So we built over the existing furnace, left the space over here, moved our batteries inside for our solar setup and that worked out perfect for us. Um, we didn't need the storage space for anything else. We had plenty of storage everywhere else. So it worked out great to put the batteries and all of our solar stuff under here. Beneath the couch is a really special place for us because it is our DC power center. And by that, that's where we have our battery banks. It's where we have our solar charge controller. And it's also where we have our inverter. And of course, all the wiring that makes our DC power actually run inside the camper. So we custom built the couch specific to the furnace that was already in one side of the sofa and on the other side was where we were building all the extra batteries. Because we like to boondock a lot and we work from the road, power was a super important thing for us. So we upgraded our battery system in this particular RV to three 140 amp hour batteries. So we have 420 amp hours of total power. Um, and we also have solar panel up on the roof, which comes in through wiring on the wall and comes down into the power system and we have 640 watts of solar panel feeding into those 420 amp hour batteries. We also have a 2000 watt inverter and what that allows us to do is take all of our battery power and turn it into AC power so we can plug in our computers, our cell phones, our cameras, all the equipment that we need to charge or use throughout the day as we're traveling. Again, we're doing this so we can be totally self-sufficient. As we're traveling, we can boondock and not worry about being plugged in um, indefinitely with the amount of energy that we're able to use here. We also have a battery charge uh, monitor and we have a remote switch for our inverter which we've mounted uh, over against the stove side of the, the couch and what that allows us to do is to not have to lift this up every single time to get under it. We just hit a, a button or we just take a look at the monitor and see the state of charge. So we always know what's going on with the solar power sending energy in. We always know how much energy we're using and then of course when we need to we can turn the inverter on and we can charge our devices that way using the switch on the wall. So we actually repurposed the old cushions from the old couch and I recovered them with the drop cloth, uh, the same type of drop cloth that I used for the curtains to close off the cab that I bleached. And then I just lay this blanket down on top because the dogs like to hang out on the couch as well and it just keeps it cleaner. I also added all these little throw pillows I thought were really cute. I just bought them on Amazon. We use that as like our back support because I didn't want another big cushion on the back. The curtains here that I have uh, throughout the camper, I bought these at Target. Uh, they were panels, they were really long panels that I cut and I hemmed to fit the windows. And they are light filtering, I really love them. They go with the black and white theme. And then these sconces we added, they had, um, the camper had these old brass outdated sconces here before. I found these on Amazon. They have a switch already. I didn't have to add that. So we have lots of storage here above the sofa. Uh, these originally had glass mirrors in here with like a etched design on it. I tried painting over them, but it didn't really work out. So I bought this peel and stick wallpaper, which worked out great. It went on very easy. And that's what I put to cover the mirrors. And then in here we keep different type of uh, kitchen items. I keep my Instapod up here. We keep our paper plates. And then we bought these really cool wood bins from Ikea. We have them pretty much in all the storage cabinets that we have here in the living room and we just keep odds and ends, kitchen towels and stuff in there. So this is our workspace. Uh, some time ago, there used to be a dinette here. When we bought the RV, it actually wasn't in it anymore, which was fine with us because again, like I said earlier, I did not want a dinette at all. I wanted just a dedicated desk space to do our work and a sofa. So we bought this desk on Amazon, put it together and put it right here. It fit perfect. It has um, some really nice shelves right here that we use for random things. 
Under the desk here, we have um, Huckleberry's bed. He loves to sleep under there, especially when we're driving. It's like his little cave hangout area, so we keep his bed under there. We also have a little uh, stationary bike <laughs> so we can exercise while we're working. Same as on the other side, I have these great, beautiful black and white curtains. I keep some of my plants here. We keep the dogs' bowls and their food tucked here behind the passenger seat. And then behind that, we have this really awesome water station. We keep our five gallon drinking water container because we do not drink the water out of our holding tank. We just use that for dishes and showering. We also have more storage up here. It's wonderful. Again, we painted them white, added the black hardware, and we mostly keep our camera gear and some books. And again, we have the wonderful wood containers that we bought from Ikea to hold everything. So this is our kitchen. And again, if you can see, we continued the wood flooring all the way throughout the RV. It continues into the kitchen. And like I said earlier, we painted all the cabinets. The top cabinets here are white. And then I painted the bottom cabinets in this lovely teal color for the accent color. Um, one of the things that I really, 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 really knew that I wanted when we got this RV was butcher block counters. So we splurged a little on that and installed them here in the kitchen. I absolutely love it. It's great. It's held up well. Um, along with the new countertops, we put in a new sink. We got this sink at Ikea. It's big. It's deep. It's awesome. The old sink that was here before was this dingy little plastic tube-in sink. It wasn't very deep. It barely held anything. So this is an amazing upgrade. We also went ahead and put in a new faucet. It goes along with the black theme. It pulls down. I love it. It has um, two spray features. And then right here on this wall, I built this really cool wall organizer rack just to hang um, a lot of the things that I use day to day. So like my utensils and a pot holder and our fruit and veggies. So this is my stove and my oven. It is um, propane, so it's, it works on gas. Um, it was in really, really, really great shape. Uh, it was original to the RV. We decided to keep it because it, it looked like it had never been used. Uh, but because it is older, it did not come with a way to automatically light the burners. So me and Chris added this little grill lighter. We added the little... I call them spark plugs. I don't think that's what they're called, but that's what they do. We added the little spark plugs. We added this grill lighter. So all I have to do is turn the gas on, hit the button, and the burner lights up. It's great. So this stove originally had this metal cover on the top. I didn't like it at all. It folded up and it, would, it wasn't very sturdy and it would fall on me whenever I was cooking. So we removed that and we bought this... Um, wood chopping block from Ikea. It was cheap and it fits perfectly on the top of the stove. So it works great. And if you look along the back wall here, I put up this really pretty black and white backsplash. Um, they are actually floor tiles and uh, they're peel and stick floor tiles. I decided to use it as a backsplash and I think they've worked out great so far. We haven't had any issues with them. We did use uh, extra adhesive. I used like a, a vertical adhesive for any kind of vertical surface. And so far they haven't come down or anything. They are on there. Also added this magnetic knife rack. We had one similar to it in the truck camper. I liked it, it was great. The knives stay up there. They never move, they never fall down. And it's a quick and easy grab for when I need it. For our window here, instead of adding the curtains, I decided to go with this really pretty uh, brown pull-down shade. We got it at Ikea. Ikea is amazing. So I added that there to cover that window. Up here we used to have a built-in microwave. We never use a microwave. Uh, we did have one in the truck camper and for like the first year we were on the road it was basically just held our bread. <laughs> it was just like pantry storage. We never used it. So we took the microwave out and I had this wonderful air fryer. 
we keep that up here. We have more storage under here and the drawer under the stove. I keep all of my, like my bowls, my ex more cutting boards, more measuring cups, just like bigger kitchen items. We keep extra plastic baggies here. We keep our silverware in here. We have more drinking water in this cabinet. And then one thing I really, really, really love about this kitchen, my hidden trash can. This was one thing I really, really, really wanted because our dogs like to get into the trash. Um, in our truck camper, we just had a plastic bag that we kept on the door. And whenever we left, we always had to make sure it was up and out of the way and away from the dog because she would get into it. So this is awesome because it's hidden. We don't have to move it whenever we leave for the dogs. It stays in here, they can't get in here. And then we also added the hinges so it stays open so when I'm cooking, I can take the lid off the trash and just scrape whatever needs to go in the trash in there. This is our refrigerator. It is a two-way fridge. It runs on propane or electric. It is actually very big. We've got a nice big deep freezer here. And then a nice big fridge space here. We've got these great little pull-out bins for veggies. Um, it's a nice fridge. It's original to the RV, but it works great. It originally had uh, wood colored panels here and I painted them teal to match the cabinets in the kitchen. Underneath the fridge, we have even more storage. We have these really nice deep drawers uh, and the bottom one is the biggest one and I keep all of our pots and pans and cooking utensils in and then on the top we have a I keep all my cooking spices so it's just all used just for spices because I love to cook and we do a lot of cooking uh, it's great it's quick and easy to grab coming through here is our pantry we have um, a nice big deep closet half of it is for pantry and food storage we bought these um, really cool metal pull-out bins from Ikea that we keep all of our dry goods in we have uh, more drawers underneath the pantry and those are mainly used for my supplements I have Crohn's disease so I have a lot of supplements that I take I'm trying to treat it all naturally so both of those drawers are just full of all of that, all the pills and vitamins I take. So this is our entryway. Right here at the entryway, we added these boxes from Ikea. We keep our um, shoes right here by the front door. It's just a quick, easy grab um, for when we're walking out the door. We just grab our shoes, put them on and go. We also have um, another set of boxes here that we keep all the dogs, toys and extra stuff in. And then I just have um, these little, I call them drop bins, they're just quick grab items that we need when we're walking out the door. And then I added this really pretty accordion rack. Again, it's just there to hold quick grab items. This is a little cute little decor dish that I bought. And then up here in this area, we keep the dog's leashes. And it's a great, again, a quick grab and go. When you walk in the camper, you'll see that we added a doormat that we cut up on the steps. So instead of putting wood flooring there, I thought it was a really good idea to add the doormat. And it's also, if it ever gets like really dirty, it's a quick and easy replacement. We can just cut up another doormat and put it there. This is our bathroom. It is huge. I love it. I think it's my favorite room in the RV. Um, in our truck camper, we had a really tiny wet bath. So this is a huge upgrade for us. So here we have our vanity area. We continued the bookster block into the bathroom. We added it here. We added a vessel sink and a residential faucet. Again, it's black to continue with the theme. So this is our shower. Uh, we built it out of cedar wood, which is naturally water resistant. Um, it was a true labor of love. I've seen it. Um, other RVers have done it in their motorhomes as well. I saw it. I wanted it and we made it happen. And it's amazing. So we framed out the walls with white pine. 
and then we covered that with the cedar wood and then I took water locks and I sealed the wood with that that makes it very waterproof so that when we do take a shower in here the water just beads off it never soaks in we also added uh, this copper pipe here to act as a shower curtain rod and then we added the shower curtain and that helps as well to keep water from splashing out inside of the shower we kept the original panels um, they had yellowed with age so I took a rust-oleum tub and tile paint and I painted the whole insert the top and the bottom I think that has worked out great it made it nice and bright and white again we kept the original faucet head but we did change out the hose and the shower head with an oxygenics and then we also put in a new skylight the old one was like black and grungy and gross looking so we added a nice clear one and it just adds way more nice light in here it's awesome in between the shower and the sink we left this space open we didn't put cedar here and we decided to make this built-in shelf we did add some pieces of wood here so our stuff didn't fall out but this is where i keep like my face soap hand soap and lotion and we added these really cute uh, diy hooks I made them out of one inch dowel rods and then I stained them with the same stain that I used on all the butcher block. So the last part of our bathroom tour is our DIY composting toilet. We originally had a regular RV toilet in here that we were going to keep, but Chris broke it. And instead of just buying a whole nother toilet for like $200, we decided just to build a composting toilet. It's something that we've always wanted but didn't think we could afford because the ones that are already pre-made for you are like $1,000. But I found out a way that we could make one ourselves for around 100 bucks, which was awesome. So we put cedar on the front, which is the same cedar that we used in the shower. And then we put a thick plywood on the top uh, that holds our residential toilet seat. And then we also have a compartment here that has three areas that hold our uh, spray bottle with vinegar to clean out the diverter and it also holds our uh, wood shavings that act as our uh, dry material for the number two and then we also have an area that we keep diatomaceous earth just to keep bugs out of the number two area so the way that a composting toilet works is that it separates the solids from the liquids so we have a diverter that the pee goes into and we actually have it plumbed to our black tank so we don't have to empty out like a one gallon jug container it works really great for us and then number two we built a little area that we put a trash bag in and it makes it really easy because if we ever just want to dispose of it we could just take the trash bag out and dispose of it properly above here again we have the white cabinets with the nice uh, black hardware and we just keep all of our toiletries in there like our toilet paper paper towels cleaning supplies stuff like that also have you noticed the art and the camper all the photos that you see were taken by me and this was one of my favorite pictures that i took in antelope canyon and the last room is in the back of the rv and it is our bedroom it holds a queen size bed we added the same curtains that are in the rest of the camper except to these I added a blackout material to make it really private in here. We can actually make it really dark in here um, with that blackout material. It's really nice. Uh, I added these IKEA shelves next to the bed. They kind of act like a little nightstand. We keep our phone and stuff that just we need right around bedtime. We carried the white paint into here, which you can see uh, we painted our closets with. We keep all of our clothes in here. We have a nice hang up space so I can hang up my shirts so they don't get wrinkled. And then we added shelves. So we have these shelves here so I can keep folded clothes on. And then underneath I keep all like my socks and underwear. We also have these nice deep drawers here to keep other clothes in. Also more storage up over the bed. Again, these had the uh, same glass mirrors in it with the ugly etched design. So again, I added the peel and stick wallpaper, the same as in the living room. 
We um, upgraded the fan above the bed. This is a fantastic vent. Uh, we love it. It has it's a two way, so it acts as either like a ceiling fan, or it can pull fresh air into the RV. And one of the things that I really loved about this RV when we bought it is it came with these awesome sliding doors. We I decided to keep them. Um, they're great for privacy if we ever needed it. Uh, they are on like a sliding track. They were an ugly brown fake wood color. I sanded them down, primed them, painted them the same teal color that's in the kitchen. And then I made a design out of quarter inch wood slats and they match up when they close. The design matches up. Um, I also made these really pretty handles that go on here. They're the same uh, one inch wood dowels that I stained and then they're held on with bell clamps. And then to keep the doors from sliding around when we're driving, I made these really cute little, I got them like really cute little clips. They're actually, they were actual door pulls for like handles for a cabinet. Um, and I cut them and I added cup hooks and they just slide onto the cup hook and they latch and they keep the door from sliding around when we're driving. I wanted to make our bedroom really feel homey, so I bought these throw pillows. I love them. Chris does not. He actually calls them throwaway pillows, but I think they're beautiful, don't you? And then last but not least, and one of my favorite things that we added in this RV was a laundry chute. So we made a little cabinet door. We built our own door. We cut a hole onto the top of the wood. And then we have like a little laundry bag that we bought at Walmart that attaches with cup hooks into the storage unit. So we just lift this cabinet door and we throw our dirty laundry in. It goes right in there. It's awesome. And our dogs are very, very important to us. They are like our children. So Chris made a step for them so they can easily get in and out of the bed so they don't stress out their joints. So he built a step on his side and he actually made it to where it has storage underneath for extra shoes. So it's multi-purpose and it's great. And the dogs will even use it as a bed sometimes. So it's worked out really awesome. Well, Lindsay and I met in the middle of adventure as we were traveling on a mission trip to Cuba. And since we met and fell in love, our life together has been entirely about adventure and travel. At the time when we decided that we wanted to do the RV life, we were foster parents for eight boys. And that was a challenge. More challenging than anything we've experienced on the road. And it taught us a lot about ourselves, a lot about us as a married couple, a lot about us being potential parents because we did not have children at the time and we weren't so certain that we wanted to. So when our commitment ended, we bought a truck camper and a truck, we outfitted it, and we decided to try to drive from Alaska to Argentina. We didn't even know if it was possible when we left. We just did what we felt called to do, and that is why we are called to wander. We hoped we would arrive, but we weren't really certain. And we had absolutely no idea what we were doing when it came to RV life. Like, we were super naive. <laughs> so, our trip went great. We made it to the top of the world, all the way up to Dead Horse, Alaska. We went and put our feet in the Arctic Ocean, drove up the Dalton Highway to do that amazing incredible experience where we were still naive to all the things that could go wrong in life on the road we love our truck camper it took us all the way to baja mexico where we got to camp on the beach we got to connect with amazing people a lot of great service projects which is part of our heart of traveling had a really great time and then all of a sudden the world shut down COVID hit and that changed things for us just like it probably changed things for you and all of a sudden RV life looked a whole lot different. So we quarantined in Florida and in the fall of 2020, we decided to make an East Coast trip in our truck camper. And what happened on day one of that trip? We started to find out that the truck camper was getting a little too small. <laughs> because you got a puppy. Yeah, so we added a second dog and it just wasn't enough space. You know, we work full time on the road. It was very small. The life on the road was great, but we needed more space. It wasn't comfortable. Every time you wanted to do something, you had to move something out of the way. 
and it was great for truck camper life. We love truck camper living, but the fact of the matter is we had to work full time. We're building our business on the road and we had to work and Lindsay had to cook food and the dogs had to have a place to sit. And all that would take place in the same place in the truck camper, right around the salon. We had to climb in bed every night in the cab over, which was cute at first, but it got tiresome after a while. And it just became a challenge for us to consider living another three more years, because at that point we had lived almost three years in our truck camper. We said, I don't know if we can continue to live this life. We thought in three years from the day we left Florida, we would go to Alaska, and in three years we would be all the way down in Argentina. And when that didn't happen, we realized something had to change. We loved life on the road and we didn't want it to end. So we found a bigger RV. And that's why we bought our 1999 Class C motorhome. And that has been a fun thing to remodel. As you've seen, we've transformed it from the 1990s into the 2021s. And uh, boy, I tell you what, it has been a tremendous challenge, but it has been an awesome opportunity to learn. We've put our hands on every part of this camper. We in some piece own every part of this from a standpoint of fixing it or remodeling it, making it look better, giving it more functionality. So it really is through blood, sweat and tears. This has become a home that we've kind of rebuilt from the ground up. Our Class C motorhome is on the Ford E450 chassis and it comes with the Triton V10 engine, gasoline engine. And what that means is we get a whole lot of power out of this thing. It can take us up mountain passes. It can take us pretty much anywhere we want to go without concern about the power from the engine. It does consume quite a bit of gas. We get about seven to nine miles per gallon. When we were shopping for Class C RVs, this was the only engine that we were shopping for. We did not want any other engine other than the Ford uh, V10 engine because we knew it was reliable. It had all the power we would ever need and we would not have to worry about the mountain passes or any other driving conditions that we would face. One of our favorite things about this vehicle is that we upgraded the tires to all-terrain. We use Toyo tires through Discount Tire. We love both companies. The quality of the Toyo tire has been phenomenal for us with our truck camper. It took us all the way up the Dalton Highway, all the way back down, all kinds of off-road conditions and the Toyo tire. So, when we needed to upgrade tires or change our tires for this RV, we decided to upgrade to all-terrain. Even though they're bigger, they're beefier, they cost us a little bit more, they cut down on our gas mileage a little bit. The reality is what it allows us to do is just go a couple miles off-road, which is where we're usually camping when we're boondocking or dry camping. We go on BLM land and we usually have to go anywhere between two to five, maybe 10 miles down dirt roads. We trust these tires to not leave us stranded on the side of the road, to not have to replace them. One of the things we love about this Class C camper is all the additional storage space that we have that we didn't have with our truck camper. So we're able to set up camp outside and really take advantage of all the different things that we're able to pack to set up camp. So I'm gonna walk you through that stuff right now, really quickly. So outside we have all kinds of storage bays that open up and provide all sorts of space. And so you can see we packed away all kinds of things, outside pantry stuff, dog food, and so forth. Each of these storage bays has all kinds of different stuff in it. So on the next one over, we've got all of our grill equipment. And the next one from there, it's all of our setting up camp, our RV leveling blocks, our camp chairs, our uh, sandless mat. On the back side of our RV, we've got a storage area where we say we put all of our fun stuff, plus some toilet paper and some paper towels. <laughs> So we have our stand-up paddle board, we've got our snorkeling gear, we've got our bike helmets, all of our biking gear. We've got all kinds of stuff that we use for outside. We also have a hitch-mounted bike rack, so we can put our two bikes back here and take them everywhere we go. And we have traction pads in the event we get stuck in the sand or the mud, which I don't anticipate. This ladder takes us up to the roof where the only reason we go up on the roof is just to check the condition of the roof itself, which we just put a brand new Henry Tropical silicone sealant on there. And we also have our solar panels on the roof, which I'll go up and I'll clean from time to time and just make sure everything's in good working order. On this side of the RV is really where our utilities are when we're at camp. If we have a full hookup, it's great because we do have our city water connection so we can have water going into our camper on demand when we're hooked up. We also have our water tank 
um, where we can fill that water tank up. Our power comes out uh, just to the side over here. And then we also have our sewer connection here. Something interesting that we've done with our sewer is because we have a composting toilet, we don't have any solid waste. So everything that we dispose of is either in our gray tank as liquid waste, or we're diverting our urine into our black tank, so that's liquid as well, which means we got to get rid of the standard RV sewer pipe, and now we can use just a standard garden hose for our waste. One of the non-negotiables when we were shopping for Class C RVs was to have a very great onboard generator. So this is an Onan 4000, so we get 4000 watts out of it. It's fueled by gasoline, which comes out of the same uh, gas tank as our vehicle. And so as long as we have gas in the gas tank, we're able to run the generator. 4,000 watts is more than enough than we'll ever need to be able to top off our batteries. We do have solar, so we don't have to worry so much about using the generator for that. But if we ever want to run our air condition, this will crank out enough watts to run our air condition. It'll also power any other electronic devices if we need to. Over here, we also have our hot water heater. It holds six gallons of hot water, which is usually enough once we heat it up that we can both take our showers and have a little bit of hot water to be able to wash the dishes. It is fantastic because it runs on electric or on propane. We typically use it just on propane and there's a switch inside. Just hit the switch and it fires right up for us. A couple minutes later, we have hot water. And in this compartment here, we have 13 gallons of propane, which is great. With our truck camper, we had two tanks that were smaller tanks and we'd have to take them out and get refilled separately. This holds three times as much as we've ever had with propane and it's all right here on board. Feeds all of our propane devices from our stove and our oven, our hot water heater, our refrigerator, and you can never forget your furnace. And perhaps our favorite thing about the outside space with our RV is our retractable awning. It is manually retracted and put out but at the same time it's great it covers out about eight feet and it goes 20 feet long it gives us plenty of space to be able to get our own shade when it's hot outside really enjoy the front porch what we call it the front porch of our camping space thank you for taking the time to watch this tour video of how we turn this old rv into our full-time home on the road i hope it inspired you and if you have any questions about anything we did in here We'd love to answer them. Also, please remember to subscribe to our channel and go watch all the videos that we've made of this remodel. Thanks for watching.